Hello folks. So in the last video, I got as far as automating the creation of these enemies and I created some kind of level difficulty so that I can control how hard each level is going to be with the intention that as you go through the levels and as you kill all these guys, it's just going to get harder and harder and it's going to spawn bigger and stronger guys. So what I want to be able to do now is actually alternate between levels. So I want to have two conditions. One is when I've killed them all and I move on to the next level. And two is when they've destroyed the castle and the game is over. So first, I'm going to focus on the level complete scenario. And before I do that, there's a couple, well, there's a few extra variables that I want to add in here. So at the moment, I have my level starting at level one. I've got a level difficulty and a target difficulty. What I also want to do is add in a multiplier. So this is going to be called difficulty, uh, difficulty underscore multiplier. And I'll set this to 1.1. And the purpose of this is going to be to basically increase each level by 10%. So that means that this target difficulty is going to go up by 10% every level. So each time you complete a level, the next one is going to be harder. Now the next couple that I need are going to be game over. Uh, I'm not going to use this right away, but I will need it later on. So I'll just start off with game over and I'll set it to false. Next level, I'll set this to false as well. So this is almost like a trigger to say, okay, level is complete, move on to the next one. And then I've got this enemies alive from before, so I'm gonna use this one as well. So the first thing I wanna do, like I said, is find out if I have killed all the enemies and the level is complete. Well, to do that check, to find out if I've killed them all, I basically just need to check how many are still alive. So I need to count them all. I need to go through that enemies group and count how many are still alive. Remember, the enemy code here, this is my separate file here, it has this self.alive variable. So if I simply iterate through all of the enemies and say, is this one alive, is this one alive, and count how many are alive, I'll know when I've killed them all. So that's what I'm gonna do in here. If I go into the main game loop within the main code, just down the bottom where I have my created enemy section, I'm basically just generating them one by one until I reach the target difficulty. In fact, I have this print statement from before. If you still have this as well, then feel free to get rid of that. That was just for testing. Uh, and now underneath that, I can start checking if they've all been killed. But before I can check if they've all been killed, I need to first of all check if they've all been spawned. Because otherwise, if you maybe kill them too quickly, you might, uh, basically it could be a little glitch that you go on to the next level without killing everyone that's been generated yet. So first of all, say, check if all the enemies have been spawned. So then we say if level underscore difficulty is greater than or equal to the target difficulty, remember the enemies are going to be generated as long as the level difficulty that we're at right now is less than the target that we're aiming for. So when that condition has been met, that means that we've generated all the enemies that we plan to generate for this level. Now I can start counting them. So I can say check how many are still alive. So I'll start off with a variable that says enemies alive equals zero. Now I did set this right at the beginning before my game loop, but I need to reset it at the start of each of these checks back to zero because now I'm gonna start counting them. Now I can iterate through the enemy group. I can say for E in enemy underscore group, this is the group that houses all of the enemy instances that I create as I go along. So this the length of this, or rather iterating through this just gives me each of my enemies instances one by one. And that means that I can access their variables. So I can say if e dot alive is equal to true, well, that means that this enemy is not dead. That therefore enemies dot alive is increased by one. Whoops. So when I've completed this for loop, this is going to come back and tell me how many enemies are left at the end. And in fact, I can test this out. So at the end of the for loop, let's just say print enemies underscore alive. So this isn't going to print anything until all the enemies have been generated. So let's run this. It'll take a few seconds. And once it starts generating them all, it should give me a number for how many are alive. And there you go. So there's nine that have been spawned. If I start killing them, that number should start dropping. And there we go. It is dropping off. So there's four, three, two, last guy. Kill this one. And there's no enemies left. So I can see now that this part is working correctly. So now I can just add in another check underneath this for loop, just where I had my print statement and say, if there are none alive, the level is complete. So I can say that if enemies alive is equal to zero, then 
remember I had that variable which was next level, it's basically my trigger, then next level becomes true. So this is going to allow me to move on to the next level. So now I have a trigger for knowing when the next level is about to happen and I can process that. So that's what I need to do next. I need to come out of this if statement here because that part is complete. Uh, I'm basically now recording the fact that there's a next level. So now we can say move on to the next level. And I can do that check if that variable next level is equal to true, then I can do all the processing for moving on to the next level. So within here, I, first of all, I want to reset that variable. I want to say the next level is now false because I only want to execute this trigger once and reset it back to false until it's met again. So now that it's the next level, first of all, I need to increase the level number. So I move on to the next one. I need to reset, I need to reset my last enemy counter. Remember, this is the counter that's up here. Uh, which is basically making sure that I don't spawn them all at the same time. It allows me to pass a bit of time between them. So last enemy becomes pygame.time.get underscore ticks. So that records the current time. And then I increase my target difficulty. So this level is going to be a little bit harder than the one before. I multiply it by the difficulty multiplier. So now it's going to be 10% harder than the previous level. And of course, I need to reset the current level difficulty back to zero so that I have something to aim for. So I start from zero and I go towards the target. And the other thing is all of those enemies are still there. Although their alive variable is set to false because they've all been killed, the, their objects are still there and they still exist and they're still being blitted. I need to get rid of them all at this point. So I need to reset that group. I'll say enemy underscore group dot empty. That basically just clears it, gets rid of all those enemies, and then I'm allowed to create new ones. Now, there are some issues with this, but I want to show the progress of it. So let's run this code and see what happens. So I create a bunch of enemies, and I'm just going to start destroying them all. So once I've killed them all, in fact, I'll let them come onto the screen so we can tell. Right, so that red goblin is the last one. Once I kill them, everything disappears and they start coming in again. So it kind of works, but it all happens a bit too fast and there's not really any feedback or anything like that to tell you what's happened. So there's a couple of things that I want to add in and to fix here. The first one is that it happens instantly. So as soon as I've killed all those enemies, you notice that the group just got instantly cleared and the new ones started coming in. Uh, that's a bit too soon. I actually want a little bit of a delay just so that you can acknowledge the fact that the level is complete, there's a little break, and then you move on to the next one. So for that, again, I just need to use a timer like I've done for a few other things so far. And I'll register that timer when I hit this trigger here. So this section here where I say if enemies alive is equal to zero, I trigger next level. Well, at the same time, I want to record what time it is right then. So I say a level reset time, and we take a timestamp, just I've done so many times, pygame.time.get underscore ticks. Uh, now, what will happen here, however, is it's going to register that time and potentially just keep doing it over and over. So I only want this trigger to happen once. So I'm going to add that in here as a check. I'll say as long as next level, if that trigger is false at the time, only then am I allowed to trigger it. So once I've triggered it, I take the current timestamp and then I move into this section here. And now within here, rather than doing all this stuff instantly, I can add that little time delay. So I can just say if level reset, uh, no actually it's not that, it's the current time first. So I'll, I'll take the time that it is right now, I'll take a new timestamp, get ticks minus level reset time. If that is greater than 1500, so if one and a half seconds have passed, then we do all of this reset. So this will just give that little bit of a delay between each level. And what I'll actually do here, uh, just to speed that process up a little bit, uh, where's the part where I do damage to the enemies? Ah, it's in the enemies class. So you don't need to follow along with this bit, I'm just doing it so I can uh, speed up the demo a little bit. So now whenever I hit one of the enemies, they lose 250 health. It just means I'll, I'll kill them much quicker. So let's get them to spawn out first. So they're coming along. And I should really just hit them and yeah, I'll kill them on one hit pretty much. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
And I'll let this guy get a little bit closer, kill him. There's a little bit of a delay, and then it clears and moves on to the next level. Now, you could change that number. Uh, you could set it to a longer delay or a shorter delay if you like. I found that uh, one and a half seconds was about right when you're playing multiple levels over it. So the other thing that I want to do is give some kind of player feedback. So when the level is complete, I want to actually print onto the screen level complete so that you know what's happened. Uh, Pygame doesn't allow you to just print things onto the screen. When I type print, you notice it comes up in the console instead down here uh, or the terminal, sorry. So what I want is to be able to put images or sorry, put text onto the screen. And to do that, you basically need to convert the text into an image and then you can treat it just as a regular image here. You just blit it onto the screen. So. First of all, there's a couple of things I need to define. Uh, we'll come down here where I've got all my other variables. So I've got my variables here, my game variables, images. I'll just do this above the images. I'll say define font. So I need to know which font Pygame is going to be using memory. I'll say font equals pygame.font.sys font. And the font I'm using is Futura. And I'm going to define a couple of fonts. Uh, so I'll set one which is at size 30, and then I'll set another one which is at size 60, just so that I can use different sizes of text. So with that done, I need to then take my text, convert it into an image, and blit the image onto the screen. Now, because I'm going to do that a few times, it's going to get repetitive. So it makes more sense to just create this as a function. I'll create the functions above the classes. Uh, and actually, I'm going to reorganize this a little. I'll change, I'll move my colors section above all these images just so it's all kind of kept together so i've got my variables then my colors and then my fonts so that's a bit neater come down here underneath my images but above my castle class and i'll say function for outputting text onto the screen say so define def draw underscore text this is going to take a few arguments now it's not a class so it doesn't need self as i've been using pretty much everywhere else so far uh, you just go straight into the arguments that you actually need. Next one is the font, then the color that I want to use for my text, and then an X and a Y coordinate for it. So what this function does, like I said, it just takes the text, turns into an image. So let's say image equals font.render. So font is this argument here. Font.render text, which is a text that I want to display onto the screen, the first argument, and then I need to give it the color. So text call, which is this third argument here. And once that image is created, I want to blit it onto the screen. So that's just as I've done previously, screen.blit the image at the coordinates of X and Y. And that's it. That's the draw text function. But now it just means I can just call this part here every time I want to put any text onto the screen. So let's go back to this level complete section down below. And it was going on here. So I've got this part here for moving on to the next level. So if next level is true, then straight away we want to put that text onto the screen. Draw text, and the text that I want is all caps, level, complete. And I want this to be pretty big, so let's say font underscore 60. Use the big font that I created. The color is going to be white, and the coordinates are 200 and 300. So that will draw the text, and it's going to hold there for that one and a half second duration. And I suppose that's the other reason for it. If I didn't have this trigger or this timer, this level complete will flash up for an instant. Then next level will be set back to false and this condition is no longer met. So if I try this again, uh, in fact, I probably need to create less enemies for this because it's going to take too long. So let's set the target difficulty just to a low number. I'll just do like 200 for now. And that will limit it to just a couple two or three enemies. So there they come along. Yep, I've got just two enemies. Kill the first one, kill the second one, level complete, wait one and a half seconds, and then they come out again. Level complete, and move on to the next one. So that's all working pretty well. I'll just reset these variables before I forget. Put that one back, and back to 25 on here. So that's pretty much it. Now I've got level progression, although it's not displaying the level number that I'm on, I will add that in eventually, but I've got some progression within the game now that you can actually play more than one level and it gets more and more difficult as you go along. Uh, I'm going to add in more features in future videos, but for now, if you found this useful, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.